The MSI X470 Gaming M7AC features 15 digital power phase for superior overclocking, rainbow LED header support, and an M.2 Frozer shield for enhanced heat dissipation. Overclock your memory easily using AXMP and enjoy a sophisticated BIOS engineered with gamers and enthusiasts in mind. Click on the link below to learn more. What's going on guys, Kyle with Bitwit here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a closer look at the H500M from Cooler Master. This is their brand new mid-tower case that builds upon the existing H500P cases, such as the original and the mesh version, uh, but it's $200 US. It's a little bit more expensive, but it also has a lot more premium features to boot. So we'll be exploring those later today. Um, this is a very interesting case. It has a very similar design language as the existing H500Ps. However, there are some slight changes on the outside, and we'll work our way in later, uh, we have a lot of tempered glass going on here. There's a tempered glass side panel on both sides, on both the left and right, that operate in very much the same way that the H500P cases do, where there's a single thumb screw that you can turn 90 degrees, and then it'll sort of uh, slide or tilt down, but it won't actually come all the way off. There's a, a safety latch that protects it from just falling and shattering on your table or something like that. So it's a very smart, well thought out design. I'm, I'm glad to see it return for this case. And there's also tempered glass on the very top panel um, that is removable, the whole top panel can be removed with a single thumb screw at the back and then it slides back and pops off very easily. But the tempered glass at the top is nice because it allows you to see your fans, any case fans that you might have up there, radiators and so forth. Taking a look at the front of our case, you can see that the entire front panel is completely mesh. However, the case includes a second front panel insert in this rectangular shape that's full tempered glass. So if you wanted to swap out the mesh rectangular piece right here, for glass, you could very well do that if that's your aesthetic preference. Uh, I personally like the mesh here. Obviously, that's going to be much better for airflow, um, and I think it just it looks perfectly fine, especially since you already have these large pieces of mesh on either side of the front panel either way that uh, that, that really match well with the, the front mesh. Another thing to point out with the mesh area here, actually all the mesh on this case, including the top panel as well, um, has this sort of honeycomb shape, but then behind that is a much finer mesh that actually serves as, uh, as a dust filter, essentially. So basically the entire front and the entire top panels are doubling as their own dust filters, which I think is pretty cool. Um, obviously you might have to clean it off a little bit more often if you wanna preserve that really clean look because dust will be very visible all over the case. However, I think it's a very straightforward, easy solution that just seems to make sense. Um, also the other thing I wanna say is even if you were to, to, to pop in the tempered glass panel here at the front, um, it still looks like you'd get some pretty decent airflow because the, the ventilation, the, the mesh on the sides of the front panel are fairly large and even more important Importantly, there's a fairly sizable gap between the front installed fans and the front of the panel, which means that there should be healthy airflow coming in from at least the sides of the panel. Of course, having the full mesh at the front would open up the case for even more airflow. While we're on the topic of fans, you get a pre-installed 140 millimeter, fairly standard black case fan at the back, and then you get two pre-installed 200 millimeter addressable RGB fans, and the lighting there can be controlled with either the included controller, or you could even use something like Asus or a Sync or MSI Mystic Light. I believe the support for Gigabyte Fusion is still pending, however, and obviously you have to make sure that whatever motherboard you're using has a addressable RGB header on it. Now this is already chalking up to be a pretty decent case for air cooling, however it doesn't skimp on water cooling support either, as you get support for up to a 280 or 360 millimeter radiator at the front or the top of the case, and there's even support for a 200 millimeter radiator at the front. The only 200 millimeter rad I've seen up until this point has been the one at the Cooler Master Suite at CES earlier this year, which I would have to assume they're launching sometime soon, maybe at Computex or shortly after, just to complement the feature set of this case. Additionally, we have a pretty robust front panel I.O. here, including a power button that's in the shape of a Cooler Master logo, but doesn't have any Cooler Master branding, which I can very much appreciate. What looks to be a reset button to the right of that, I'm not sure if that's a reset button or controls the RGB lighting, we'll, we'll test that out later. And then we have audio and mic jacks with four USB 3.0 ports and a USB 3.1 Type-C Gen 2 port at the front. Thank you, Cooler Master. Let's just give a little, little clap. The front panel paneling looks very nice. It's kind of got this glossy black finish that continues around the rest of the case. However, it's very prone to dust buildup, lint, and fingerprints, so you'll want to maintain it regularly if you want to keep that clean exterior. 
Moving around to the back, you get some flexible mounting strips for either that pre-installed 140 millimeter fan or a 120 fan. There's also seven expansion slots along with two vertical slots if you wanted to mount a GPU vertically in this case. However, no riser card is included, of course. And then there's a very nice uh, power supply bracket with four beefy thumb screws with a removable slide out dust filter for your power supply at the very bottom. That pretty much covers the outside of the case. Uh, one thing that I forgot to point out is that anything on the outside that's not mesh or glass is probably plastic. Um, there's a lot of plastic pieces going on around here, very similar to the, the plastic that was used on the H500P, the original case. However, this case overall feels much sturdier because they've reinforced the top and front panels to not pop off so easily when you're just casually lugging the case around. So overall, I think it does feel like a much more premium case, at least from the outside. But let's take a look at the inside. Uh, I should grab some, some components that are lying around here and we should start building a system inside of this case to get a better feel for the internal layout and how it all works. So let's go ahead and do that now. So taking a look at the internal layout here, uh, a couple things I want to mention. First off, we have a fairly generous cutout for our CPU cooler that currently has this sort of cover plate on the back behind the motherboard tray, which we'll take a closer look at later. And then I've actually uh, installed the nine standoffs that we need for our ATX motherboard. Initially, there were only two uh, standoffs that were pre-installed, the middle one and the top middle one. Um, both of these are ridged or they have a little lip around them so it's easier to mount your motherboard initially, but I did have to mount, uh, install the other standoffs. So with the motherboard installed, you get a better idea of how large this internal space is because this is a standard ATX motherboard and the chassis does support up to EATX, however. So there's actually a mounting hole here you can see for an EATX board uh, standoff. And if you did install an EATX board, you'd probably be covering up a portion, maybe about half of these rubber grommets here. You get three in total, just to the right of the motherboard. They're fairly large, fairly high quality, and they seem snug. They, they, they seem like they're not gonna pop out if you, you know, start passing a bunch of cables through them. There's also a pair of medium-sized cable cutouts just above your motherboard. However, these are not grommeted. That being said, if you're installing fans or a radiator and some fans at the top of your case, you're probably not gonna be seeing much of those cutouts anyway. And at the very foot of your motherboard, you'll find a fairly large cutout for routing additional cables. This cutout is actually sort of a, a missing piece of the power supply shroud. So it's not very visible, which is why it's also not grouted, doesn't really need to be. And this is also where you would route a couple cables, your SATA cables particularly, if you were mounting SSDs to the top of your power supply, which we'll take a look at in just a bit. Over here we have a steel panel that uh, can actually house two two and a half inch drives with these handy little peg uh, screws that are pretty much like little mini thumb screws. You screw them into your SSD, one in each of the holes, and then you can pretty much just like pop them in like little pegs. Boom, it's like virtually toolless and very easy to use. Uh, you can pop it there or right here. There's even a cutout here for routing SATA cables. Uh, and there's also enough space here if you wanted to just route SATA cables underneath, uh, straight from underneath the panel as well. You'll also notice that there are some flexible mounting strips for a reservoir if you want to do some custom water cooling in here. That is also very much appreciated. This little guy is actually really cool. It's sort of a crutch for your video card to eliminate GPU sag. Uh, it's very simple the way it works, very straightforward. It's just a rubber pad that has two screws that if you loosen them, you can sort of move the pad up and down so that it's in the right position for hoisting up your particular model of graphics card. We'll definitely be testing this out later on in the build. Taking a look at the lower half of the case, we get a very nice power supply basement that spans the whole length of the case. It's actually a two piece sort of shroud here. Uh, the rear area that covers the power supply that actually has this other removable piece. It looks like it's uh, got a Cooler Master logo here, but no actual branding. I believe you can pop this out uh, if you want to show off your power supply, if you, if you have RGB or something like that, or you just wanna uh, rep the brand or whatever. On top of this part of the power supply shroud, we get some more rubber pads for, you guessed it, two, two and a half inch drives. If you wanted to mount a pair of SSDs to the top here so that they're visible through your side panel window, you could go ahead and do that with the same sort of peg mounting system that we saw with the steel wall earlier. Uh, it works very well, very nice and clean looking. And here's a nice, uh, a nice shot of that large cable cutout that I mentioned earlier at the base of your motherboard where you would ideally route all of your SATA cables to either of these drives. And then you've also got this front piece that is sort of hiding your, your hard drive cage underneath. Um, removing this as well as the hard drive cage will also open up additional clearance uh, for your radiators and fans at the front of your case should you be installing them. On top of the hard drive shroud, you'll find a removable bracket for custom water cooling pumps that's held in place by two screws, as well as a sort of uh, radiator lid that can be popped off. That way you can have additional clearance for a radiator, for example, at the front of your case without really compromising on the hard drive cage underneath. You'll still be 
able to have that installed, I believe, uh, by sliding it over, as we'll see a little bit later. Now, something to bear in mind at the top of your case is that you only have a clearance of 43 millimeters for your radiator and your fans, which I am not currently meeting. And that's why I'm bumping into my motherboard's VRM heatsink and unable to mount this radiator to the top. Uh, what I'm gonna have to do is pop these fans off and place them on top of the frame, on the opposite side of the frame here, so that they're just sitting right underneath that glass top panel, and that way everything will fit properly. So let me go ahead and swap that now. Radiator and fans are installed properly now, and you can see I routed all the cable fans through this opening, this little cutout here at the top of the case. All the cables routed through just fine. There's also another cutout towards the back. I guess I could have used that one too, because it eventually got pretty tight, uh, especially since these are RGB fans that have two cables coming off of each fan. Um, but everything threaded through just fine. Let's go ahead and pop that top panel on really quick and just see how everything fits here. Oh yeah. That went on no problem. And it looks like there's still about maybe an inch, maybe an inch or so of space between the fan blades and the top glass piece. So there's plenty of room for, for healthy exhaust going on at the top of the case here in this current configuration. So no red flags here. All right, we've already got our power supply bracket installed to the unit and we can pretty much just load it from the back of the case, but I'm gonna pop off this cover here. This is actually like a power supply cover that I don't believe was on the original H500P or the H500P mesh, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but I don't remember it really. Um, so it pops off. Oh, and hey, look, we've got a, sort of a controller here for our RGB stuff, addressable RGB connectors that is SATA powered. And it looks like there's also micro USB for potentially firmware updates if you wanted to send them straight to the board here. And this is what I was talking about earlier. They've actually plugged in your reset switch front panel connector uh, into this two pin header on this board um, so that you can actually use that button for controlling your RGB function and, and different modes and stuff. Or you could just plug this into your standard front panel connectors on your motherboard if you still wanted to use your button for resetting the system. So let's go ahead and leave this off for now and install our power supply. Looks like you get two additional covers behind the motherboard tray here as well, including the CPU cooler cutout, which we sort of saw the other side of earlier, and then this very large one that probably covers most of where your cables might go. Let me go ahead and unscrew these. There's two Phillips head screws for this larger panel. Looks like it's on a hinge, so doesn't quite... Oh, yeah, you can take it off. That's nice. So that comes off no problem, and then it looks like we have no screws for this. I believe it's toolless. Yeah, you just pop off very easily. I'm just gonna start routing some stuff while we're back here. Oh wow, this power supply cable hardly fits through this freaking cutout. You're gonna make me. You're gonna make me take them apart. You're gonna make me split them just to get them through there. All right, have it your way. I don't care. Now let's take a look at this hard drive cage, which is hiding underneath this panel, as I mentioned before. Uh, there are actually three screws that you need to undo in order to remove this front section of the hard drive shroud. So I've already removed the, the screws. There's two of them down here and one behind the motherboard tray. And it pops out like so, okay. And if you take a look at the hard drive cage, you can uh, house two three and a half inch or two two and a half inch drives. So that's nice. But the other thing that I wanna point out here is that you access the hard drives from this side of the case, not from the back side behind the motherboard tray, which means if you ever need to service your hard drives or swap them out should one die, God forbid, you actually have to remove this entire portion of the power supply shroud. And if you're in the middle of, you know, using a custom water-cooled PC that you've built inside this chassis and you've got, you know, your pump and your reservoir and stuff, you're kind of disrupting a lot in your system just to access your hard drives, which I don't think a lot of people are gonna be a huge fan of that, personal opinion, but you guys let me know what you think. Uh, the cages are plastic and they're very bendy, super bendy actually. That way you can sort of mount the hard drives toollessly because there are those pins that you kind of just slot it in, goes in the, uh, the four holes of your hard drive and you slot it back in. Obviously the SSDs are gonna need to get four screws uh, from the bottom. So to unmount this part of the shroud, you actually need to remove one, two, three, four, five screws because there are two additional screws at the very back of the case helping hold it in place. And then it should pop off like so. Now, removing both pieces of your power supply shroud allows you to move the hard drive cage in one of two locations. The first position being right here up at the front of the case so that you have additional room for your power supply, maybe some excess cabling, or you can slide it over a couple inches to the left. That way you open up the front of the case for perhaps a water cooling radiator or some fans. 
Taking a closer look behind the motherboard tray, we get two more mounting points for SSDs. So we have the same peg mounting solution for two and a half inch drives that works oh so beautifully. Uh, and you can route your cables straight from the bottom here because this, this cable cover for your power supply actually has a cutout. You can see cables are, are able to actually route right there and up to your drives. Very nice. And then we've also got a bunch of tie-down points all around the motherboard tray in very smart, easy to reach locations. The one thing that I'm conflicted about with this case, at least for the cable management side of things, are these large covers. Um, I don't know how to feel about these. On one hand, they look really nice when they're put into place because obviously you have a tempered glass side panel window on this side of the case so you can see everything. It does make everything look clean when they're installed. At the same time, I feel like it creates more work for the end user because look, I can't even really mount this cover here without rearranging this cable and sort of redoing my cable management on that end. I don't know, I, I'm so on the fence here. I need your guys' opinion. Let me know in the comments. Do you find these things valuable? Is this a value add to you or is this sort of gimmicky kind of a waste of your time and money? I don't know. Let me know in the comments because I don't know how to feel right now. All right, step one, pop in the GPU. Screw her down. And I intentionally picked a card that I know has a little bit of GPU sag. Let's see if our little friend here can help us out. I've loosened the screws already. That's how I'm able to slide it up and down. That looks pretty good, so tighten her down right there. And voila, like zero, absolutely zero GPU sag. It wasn't really that bad to begin with. Maybe, you know, like a couple degrees of a bend, but, um, but now there's absolutely nothing. It's perfectly straight, completely parallel with the with the with the desk and stuff. So beautiful. This this thing works. It actually works and it's very easy to use. So yay. All right, so the system is complete and I've already got it up and running. Looking good so far. I've kind of got my own little stress test going on here uh, with Unigen Heaven 4.0 running in the background at 2560 by 1440 to really put a load on our GTX 1080, which is running at stock settings. And we also have a Ryzen 7 1800X. Sorry, all my second gen Ryzen chips are in use at the moment, uh, but this is also running at stock settings at around 3.7 gigahertz. And you can see right here, we've actually got the system stability test for ADA 64 running as well. This is running concurrently with Unigen Heaven 4.0 so that we're taxing both our C GPU and our GPU fairly heavily. Uh, all cores are running at 100% utilization, as is the GPU, or actually GPU load, yeah, yeah, GPU loads eh, anywhere from 75 to 100%, but more or less, it's it's close to the 90 to 100% range. And you can see right here, our package temp for the CPU is 62 degrees Celsius at the moment, very respectable, no red flags there, and our GPU is hovering right around 71, 72 degrees Celsius. I believe the hottest it's gotten so far in the 15 or 20 minutes of Unigen Heaven uh, is about 74 four degrees Celsius. So altogether, not too shabby. As far as acoustics go, I'm sitting about a foot and a half to two feet away from the case, uh, and it's actually fairly quiet. It's definitely audible, but it's sort of a low hum. It's kind of a calming white noise. Uh, I think that's partially due to the, the large 200 millimeter fans. They're not quite as, as high pitched or whiny as smaller fans are. And overall, you know, if you're listening to some in-game sound, you're not gonna be able to hear the system in its current state much at all. So altogether, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this case. I think $200 is a lot to spend on a case these days, especially when there are so many great options way cheaper than that. But at the same time, this thing brings a lot of features to the table. And that's not to say that there aren't other $200 cases on the market that have just as many features, but those features are inherently different than the one that this case offers. So I think at the end of the day, if you have $200 to spend on a case, you have to ask yourself, what are you looking for? Do you really value the amount of custom water cooling support this has? You know, a dedicated pump bracket and reservoir mount. Um, do you absolutely love the design language and aesthetic of this case that you really can't find elsewhere? Are you a huge fan of the 200 millimeter addressable RGB fans that again is a very unique selling point to this particular chassis. If you're answering yes to all of these, then this is definitely a case worth checking out. And again, the one, the only one big problem that I have with this case is the hard drive cage. I was nitpicking at everything else, but the hard drive cage, I just wish it was flipped so that you could access the drives from behind the motherboard tray and you didn't have to remove the power supply shroud, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but for the most part, a fantastic case. Good job, Cooler Master, for making a lot of right decisions this time around. And thank you to all of you for watching this video. Go ahead and toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. You can also check me out on Floatplan if you want to watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.